We're up. We're up. It's visual radio. It is October 27th, uh, 2011. And this is visual radio number 753,012. My guest tonight is the man from the other side of the universe. I was reading Foundation Forum, I guess it's called, the old Fantastic Four, and he popped out of the comic book and there you have it. All right, so tonight... We're going to do something special. We're going to talk to John Byers. And we're going to talk to the author of Vampire Over London. Another Bela Lugosi biography. So that's what we got planned. And you have anything to say? I guess not. Not yet. But he will. Okay. I'm going to have that. Hey, see if the internet's up, guys. The internet might not be up. You want one of these? We'll call Johnny back. He's busy. He's watching the baseball game. So anyway... We're going to call Frank Delastrito. Oh, good, I brought my phone. Because without my phone, I can't call Frank Delastrito. Okay, so Vampire Over London. Bela Lugosi in Britain. Bela Lugosi, the legendary Dracula of stage and screen, returned to his great role for a final time. His last Dracula is overlooked and forgotten even by his most ardent fans, but not by those who saw him perform. What do you think of that, Vampire? You're not a vampire. Okay. But I am his friend. Oh, well, stopped. that was quick. This book is unbelievable. Oh, good. We're talking to the author tonight. This is great. What a great follow-up to the other Lugosi book, which was uh, The Count, The Immortal Count. Right. All right. Four days later, Lugosi took his last curtain call as Count Dracula. Now the story of his last Dracula is told for the first time. Vampire over London is the poignant tale of a Bela Lugosi last fling with the, royal, with the role that made him famous. Playing the character that made him immortal. That is a great book, Kevin. That is a great book. It's Death. Oh, your name is Death? It's Death. Okay. His name is Death. I went up to Burlington to the... Uh, is that book place up on 3A? It's Building 19 and a Half, which has great books. In fact, I got a great Beatles book at Building 19 and a Half. And then, um, oh, we're going to ask them to close that door there. Thank you. Um, thank you so much. So I went up to that Burlington bookstore where you can buy a ton of books. And they're having a sale this weekend, people. So if you're watching, just go up 3A here, past uh, the Wild Harvest or whatever it's called in the Woburn Country Club. Keep going up there, past uh, up to building 19 and a half. And they have magazines for 250, which is great because these things are like seven bucks now. So for 250, you can pick up uh, magazines that are like a month or two old, but it's great. Captain America's in here. Uh, magazines have to drop their prices if they're, gonna, if they're going to succeed in this world. So, Death, do you ever read the Fantastic Four? Okay. We interviewed Joe Casada, the head guy at Marvel, and about two years ago, they've come out with this whole new series. Now, this is a little bit more literate than, say, the DC series, which is very risque. Um, and DC's getting a lot of sales, and they're getting a lot of complaints, and they're getting a lot of press because of what they're doing with uh, Superman and Batman. Batman has become ultra-violent. Not that these books aren't violent in some way, but they're kind of, you know, um, out of space violent. You know what I mean? It's not as, you know, boy, he looks like you, doesn't he? It's like Dr. Doom. You look a little like Dr. Doom here on this. So anyways, that's that. Let's try our guest again. Maybe he just ran away. No, I think he has stuff to do with... Um, Getting ready for the ball game. Hello, 
Joe. Hey, John. Are we calling it a bad time? No, no. The game is just getting started, so uh, I'm just going to lower the TV and the video down, and I'll be able to talk to you for a couple of minutes. Okay. What's up? So, uh, so you got your TiVo on, I guess. Uh, yeah, actually, um, uh, I, I, do, I tape every game while I'm watching it because if I have to leave the TV for any reason, I can just rewind it back and see what I missed during the time that I'm taping it. So uh, it's St. Louis and Texas, and Texas is up 3-2. If I Correct. All right. So St. Louis can tie it all up tonight. Either that or Texas goes home with their first championship ever. 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 For the Rangers, yeah. Because remember, the Rangers, before they became the Rangers, were the original Washington Senators team before, before Washington lost them to Texas. Oh. So that, that's, that's their history. The Senators never won anything in Washington. They moved to Texas, and this is their first shot. This is their first shot in ages at having a shot to win a championship of any sort. Fascinating. So who do you want to win? Well, to me, uh, to me, I want to see the Rangers. I want to see the American League win because I mean the National League won it last year, and and where the National League got the home field last year and this year for the World Series, <coughs> see the American League win, especially with the talk that within the next couple of years uh, they're going to switch things around with the baseball, and now instead of interleague play just being once uh, in, during the season, uh, you're going to have it all season with the baseball. Wow. Well, because what they want to do is they want to it, they want to add another round to the playoffs. But in order to be able to do that, they would have to uh, take games away from the season. They want to go down to about 150 to 154 game season. And the plan is if they are able to do that, what the, will happen is every other series would be an interleague series. So say the Red Sox are in New York and the Phillies are in New York. The Phillies would go to play the Yankees. The Sox would go to pay, play the Mets. And then the, and then the next series would be Phillies, Mets, Yankees, Red Sox. So do you think that will happen? I think it will happen because the commissioner wants to add these the, these a uh, couple more teams to come into the playoffs, and he's talking about basically having an, uh, what is called a knockout round, where one game, and and that could be interesting because after you played a hundred fifty game, a hundred or hundred and fifty four game season, and then you got to play one extra game to make it to the next round. That's pressure because you're playing one game that could either make the rest of your season or ruin it. Hey, can you see us on the web live now? Uh, let me see. I haven't even turned on my computer. Let me just... Because death is with me. Yeah, let me just check it out here. I, I, you know, I, when I couldn't get you earlier uh, on the web, I, I, I turned my computer off. Let me just click to your... your, uh, your, uh, your uh, let's right here. When... No, you're still down. Okay. Hey, LaRocca was still down. But, uh, John, I have the Medford Daily Mercury in front of me. Yep. Christensen testifies before grand jury in the Paula case. Wow. First time it's got into the newspapers. Well, as we talked about the last couple of days, and I know we were both at the Medford City Council meeting last night, uh, Tuesday night. We certainly were. And uh, we, uh, I had mentioned to the council, because they had asked a question about it, what was going on in the city of Medford with the Medford Housing Authority. And um, basically what had happened was the head of the Housing Authority, his, his office was raided by the feds because now, of this ongoing case with the uh, sheriff's office. Now, the office is separate from City Hall, right? Okay. For, for people who don't know it, I'm going to try to explain it. You know, you know the hotel in Medford Square? The, um, the uh, Hyatt. The Hyatt Regency, yeah, the Hyatt, right. The, uh, the, the, uh, the, the apartment building directly across the street, if you go into that parking lot and go down off to the left side of the building, there's a slide, an electronic sliding door. You go into that electronic sliding door, and that's the housing authority office. 
So the office is in that complex right at the bus stop, right on the Mystic River, right outside of Medford Square. Right. And that got raided. Imagine living there, and if you're a senior citizen and there's a raid, the state police and the FBI are downstairs. Right. Wow. That's pretty heavy. Well, it's bad, too, because, the, again, we, we, I don't like to get into talking politics too much, but what a lot of people don't realize, and, and we, we, me and you have been finding this out lately, is that the sheriff... The mayor and the, uh, the mayor of Medford and the head of the housing authority are all tied together because the sheriff and the mayor's camp, the late sheriff's <laughs> campaign manager and the mayor's campaign manager, the same gentleman who was the acting sheriff for a while, John Granada. Special sheriff, right? right? The, the acting sheriff was a special sheriff. And then the the uh, now Katujan has taken over, appointed by Deval Patrick. But May 10th, there's going to be a, a special election right. for a new me, uh, sheriff, and we need a new sheriff. Right. Because even Katujan being appointed by Deval Patrick, it's not the people speaking. And the head, of the, the, the head of the housing authority here in Medford is, I guess, married to one of the sheriff's family members, the ex-sheriff's family members. Well, the late Sheriff DePaula, his sister, Patricia... De Paula Cavell is married to Robert Cavell, the head of the housing authority. Correct. So the, the the main question is, how far does this corruption scandal reach? Did did it reach all the way down to the mayor's office? That's still to be determined. But God forbid if it did. Well, he's in a, a, an election year for a run. If 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 that ever de if that ever gets found out that it hit that it's been that it got uh, the corruption got as high as to the Medford mayor's office. Uh, well, the, it can't yeah, be, Michael McGlynn has some questions answered. It can't be too good for Christensen, Johnny, because Christensen's running for mayor of Malden. Right. To have this kind of press is what his opponents love. Well, it's called negative press. It's not. It's name recognition, but not the kind of name recognition you want. Correct. So, uh, how's the game starting up? Is it wet out oh, there? Right now, it's in, in, one out in the first inning with two on, and Texas already leads one nothing. And, and how wet is it out there? It's dry. Matter of fact, it's about uh, 54 degrees right now out there. They threw the first pitch at about 8, 8.08 p.m. our time, which would have been 7.08 their time. All right, so Texas is on a roll. They want to win tonight. They want to win and close this out. To tell you the truth, it wouldn't be too bad for a seventh game because it extends the season one more game and... With the with the with the with the unlikelihood right now, I mean, the, the other thing was with the NBA players strike, the NBA players, that's still going on, and we're still not sure what's going to happen with that. And uh, the funny thing is, as as we're watching, as I'm watching the Rangers here, I'm uh, the other day I was watching TV, and on ESPN they were talking about the fact that over the past several months. Two Texas teams, one, the, the Mavericks won in June. They won the championship of the NBA. And now the Texas Rangers are one win away from winning the, Super, the, Stanley, uh, the, uh, the World Series. The Super Stanley Series. Oh, well, no, here, here's what I'm getting at. The, 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 the uh, Dallas Stars, the NHL franchise, a leading near division in the NHL, and, the, and could possibly have a shot at winning a Stanley Cup this year, who is the only team that has yet to win a who who is the only team that has yet to win a uh, championship in Dallas? Dallas? Yes. I can't guess. The Cowboys. Oh, okay. And that's going to be well. That's going to be kicking Jerry Jones off because the last time his Cowboys won the Super Bowl was. When they still had Troy Aikman, Michael Irvin, and all those guys with the team. Hey, Joey Romo's going to be a dad. Or is it uh, Terry Romo? What's Tony. his name? Tony Romo. Johnny Romo. Whatever it is. <laughs> all right, so Romo and his wife are going to have a baby. Who was his girlfriend there? A Kardashian or something? Um, Simpson? With one of the Kardashians for a while. He was actually also going with um, Jessica Simpson. Okay, so he got like these models. Him and Rom Gronkowski. Anyway, yeah, I mean that that's that's been making the rounds lately because uh, evidently, as we expected, as as we should have expected, ownership got involved, and they called Gronkowski in on the carpet, and uh, 
uh, he had to go issue an apology, a public apology. I think it was all PR, John. Well, and of course it's PR. I mean, remember, you're, you're one of the, the, the Patriots are one of the founding franchises of the NFL, all right? You've won three Super Bowls. You're, you're, you're high prestige. You've got lots of national coverage, and that's not the national coverage. If, if you're Bob Kraft, that's not the national coverage that you, you want with your, to be involved with your team, that one of your, one of your star players is, um, is cavorting with a porn star. Well, Johnny, my final question to you is I've had you on the show, and you were a mayoral candidate. I've had uh, Tony D'Antonio on this week, and today I invited Mayor Michael McGlynn of Medford to be on the show. I don't see him. Death, do you see Michael McGlynn? I, I don't see it either. Did I mean, you take Michael McGlynn? He's to be on the, uh, the, the uh, Monday night show that's on public access here in Medford, and so far as, as of what we know to this date, he has yet to accept the uh, invitation and that invitation's been put out to all the candidates to be on. Well, your old friend Frank called him chicken. He called the mayor chicken in the paper. Well, yeah, chicken of course. something, I mean, but I'm how, not going to... That, that's how station management and, and the, the board of directors work at that station. Unless you're on the same page as them, they're going to they're gonna rip you. Well, I'm going to say one final thing, and then we're going to hang up, Johnny. And that is, I read the station in Medford said that they're open to everyone. Big... Big, big friggin' whoop. I mean, they, they, I know for a fact they're not open, but I can tell you this before we go. I know for a fact they're not open, too. Right. It's one nothing Texas, two outs, and two on. And now it's going to the bottom of the first, one nothing Texas. Hey, Johnny, maybe Monday we'll go over to the Woburn restaurant and see uh, Damon, yeah. Damon and Mendelaro, okay? We'll see. I'll pick you up, but and I'll Jeff Damon will meet us. Bye bye. Bye. John Byers. So we're going to go over to uh, Woburn on Monday night to see 98.5 live at the sports bar if you want to go, Mr. Goblin. You're not talkative tonight. If you're not talkative, I'm going to make another phone call. Do you have anything to say? Maybe. Maybe. I heard him. I heard him from the other side. All the way from the other side. It takes a lot of energy. <laughs> I bet it does. It does. It takes a lot of energy for him to talk. A lot of energy. I get energy by talking. I haven't took any soul, so it's like, you know, it's kind of hard without my sight. You can have these. You can munch on them. And they will just go down my bones. Yo, Frank Dallas Street, let's talk about movies. Is this the uh, right phone number for you, sir? That's good enough for tonight. Well, we've got a two-fold interview with you tonight. Do you have time? I have time for you. Well, I want to talk about this book I got in the mail today, Vampire Over London. All right. Uh, we have the author of Vampire Over London, Bela Lugosi in Britain, by Frank Delastrito and Andy Brooks. Yep. Is Andy a guy or a gal? Andy's a guy. And A-N-D-I, that's an interesting spelling for a guy. Yeah, I, when I first... Uh, came into contact with him. I asked the first thing I did in my email was say you were a man or a woman, and it was, he was a guy. Now the book yeah. itself has a uh, is a wonderful cover outside of the the uh, paper cover, which is an enlarged version of the paper cover. It looks like Big Ben. Yes. And uh, Big Bela. Uh, well, if you look at the cover, it's. Uh, I mean, you're 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 are you showing it on on your your. Uh, I'm holding it up. Yep. It's. it's Vampire over London, that's the picture at the top. And then you got a little picture of Bela Lugosi in Britain. Ah. He is uh, with the whole of Parliament and the, uh, the uh, uh, Big Ben and the London, London bus. So uh, it all hangs together. 